Before the possibilities of modern medicine, Americans suffering from mental illness were often relegated to county jails, private homes, or the dark basements of public buildings. But with the efforts of Dorothea Dix, an 18th century advocate and lobbyist for the treatment of the mentally ill, state mental hospitals were established to care for these unfortunate individuals. The Kirkbride Plan became the architectural response for these institutions. Philadelphia psychiatrist Thomas Kirkbride established this plan with a design that would increase open spaces, sunlight, and air ventilation. His proposal aimed to maximize the latest advances in psychiatry, philosophy, and architecture. A total of 73 Kirkbride buildings were constructed between 1848 and 1913. Each building was large and imposing with up to eight wings in a bat wing style floor plan. By the mid 20th century, medical advances and the high cost of maintaining such structures saw them fall into disuse and, in some cases, become abandoned or demolished. One surviving Kirkbride, with its Richardsonian Romanesque architecture, is the focus of this episode. Join me now, along with my friends Michael and Brian of The Proper People, as we go exploring past the present future. Due to the nature and timing of our exploration, we avoided using our lights as much as possible and also kept our voices low. I've added subtitles for when our voices are sometimes difficult to understand. I'm fine with asbestos on the pipe, not this one. Mm. Green painted brick. To your left. It's all green. Mm. Hospital green. Makes sense. Let's go all the way. Sure. Yeah, we're just going to run up to the top to leave a better light. Yeah. And so, in case anyone comes in the building, we'll hear them. Agreed. You're sitting in the desk in the middle making a weird face. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Sounds good. Let's go up. This is a tool that I made in my original tile here. But these curved hallways from the main building to these wings are the ones with the really detailed, ornate, mm -hmm. like, emblems in the pile, which they restore. But yeah. Let's go up. Yeah. yeah. These cinder blocks are crazy, yeah. This is the curved roof. And the outside of the castle.
very, very visible here. Super clean floor. Let's have a quick look here. Remarkably clean building, preserved quite well, fenced up everywhere, along the walls, the roof section, it's very, very clean, apart from all the asbestos everywhere. I'm going to go down and find the guys again. Like that, we lost. 
lost something important and have to save the rest. Yeah. Although sections of this Kirkbride were demolished, part of it was saved and restored as a hotel. They kept these grates, they kept them in the hotel. Mm -hmm. As healthcare evolved, so did interior decorating styles. A hallmark of the 1950s was its emerging pastel and modern color trends. This Kirkbride was updated at the time with painted walls and furniture in fresh hues of vibrant yellow, mint green, pink, and orange. They already did that. Maybe that was for the uh, part that was restored. That's probably what it was. That makes sense. These might be doors from that.
drop ceiling in here? What's that? That's just the paint. Why does the smoke just stop? Because that was white up there and that was blue. Oh. Mm. And it's just the way the color changed. Yeah. It's still like not in the ceiling. set up for the tour, but still interesting and creepy. This wing of the building is incredibly photogenic. You have your standard wheelchair shot. Seats. And here's a document naming some of the other hospitals in the wider region, New York, and so on. Syracuse State Institution, New York State Hospital, and on the back of the chairs is this New York State Department of Mental Hygiene. Building collapses, the window will still be there. beam stabilization going on up here. A 
lot of support work to stabilize the building. A bit of a makeshift workbench here. Fairly dramatic weak spots in the floor. Still getting some amazing light in some of the rooms. This is obviously storage. And of interest in the storage facility is some papers, some public health service audiovisual facility instructions or guides. It's actually an empty folder. But what we have here are some other papers, some office documents uh, with a note mentioning the infamous J. and Adam Hospital. This is from 1974, September 18, 1974. And it's essentially just uh, a memorandum. And it was sent to all these different facilities in the area. Very interesting to see a bit of a crossover from one location to another. Good old J. and Adam. Way back in the day when it was actually functional and beautiful, unlike now. Completely abandoned and destroyed. Regional directors, lots of inter interesting information here. Different names and so on. And what do we have under here? Kodak photographic paper. So that's what was in this box here. I'm sure there's more papers around to look at, but that's good enough for now, I guess. Oh. A little machine here. I'm not quite sure what it is. Medical equipment of some kind. Just a room filled with stuff. Got a hallway filled with furniture and debris of all sorts. But over here in Room three, we have a chair and the polygraph. This machine is actually an electroencephalograph. It was used to monitor the electrical activity of the brain with electrodes placed along the scalp. Super fascinating to see this. Here, covered in paint chips. Ten eighty. Your crank handle here. some photos and then I'll try to catch up with Brian and Michael. Just love the colors here. I'm gonna go up and see if I can catch up to the guys and get up. Which way could they have gone? The problem is when I'm shooting with a tripod, I tend to move much, much slower. And because they're more mobile with their video recording, I tend to fall behind pretty quickly. 
I move at one quarter the pace of a proper people. I bet they went down through here. Oh. Lights on. so they had to have gone somewhere. Hmm. Well, I keep losing the guys. I'm shooting with a tripod, so I'm falling behind them a lot. So I don't know where they are. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is just go explore on my own until I meet them again, meet up with them again somewhere in the building. So I'm gonna go into the basement and go have a look. Dark basement, love it. It's an unusual place for a wheelchair. Mostly just appears to be an empty basement passageway filled with wood and tires and it's actually surprisingly clean down here. Some light, uh, some windows up there. Control panel of some kind. The red light really makes it difficult to read. I wonder if they connect. to distinguish everything it looks like as best as covering for pipes. Ah, lots of support work for the building. And through here. Stabilization efforts. dead end. sign or sound of the guys so I think what I'll do is I'll go upstairs again and try to figure out where they are having a bit of a game of cat and mouse now it's like some fires are set down here maybe maybe homeless came down here and tried to keep warm who knows chair again. Control box. It's quite plain and empty down here. I'm going to go back up. There's nothing to see down here, figuratively and literally. Just 
pipes and brick. And let's go back up. Well, it seems like I've lost Brian and Michael, which is fine. I can photograph things on my own and have a look around on my own. I'm basically done, so now I'm just retracing my steps back to the beginning, our entry point. And then, um, I guess between then and now, I'm gonna stop and take a few more photos. This room is a bit interesting. It has a couple of colorful chairs and one of these. A little platform you can hang stuff from. A couple of colorful chairs. Some windows. Overall, the building buildings are relatively empty with a few rooms having some interesting things in them. So, there you go. Now we're on our way out.